I don't know if it shows up really great on the video, but uh, what I did was I have, uh, I've got hooks in the ceiling here that I actually forgot about. I, I paint on them. Uh, I use them to paint with, and they're, they're, it's acting as my third hand. Um, this shitty, cheap-ass bungee cord is about ready to snap. This thing weighs about 30 pounds. Um, yeah, it weighs probably 30 pounds. So, what it's gonna, what the bungee cord's gonna do is just keep this thing from flying on the ground and killing me, or hurting me. Um, so, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, uh, my body hammer here, I'm going to put my earplugs back in, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my body hammer and I'm going to tap along this rail here to, um, to try to get some of the bow out. Actually, you know what, I might use the metal thing. If I rig this correctly, if I rig this if I rig this correctly, it may actually get to a neutral buoyancy state. All right, so that'll work for a minute or two. I forgot the other thing I have <coughs> um, is a uh, this masonry chisel which I use a lot for this and that's actually um, to, to get this edge crisp again um, I think that's what I'm going to use because that'll 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 bring that right down with just a couple of wax so I got to get a different hammer I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos of this guy uh, named Ox Tools. Uh, it's fascinating. He makes fascinating stuff. He works for Berkeley Labs as a machinist, but he's got this big hammer collection. And um, I'm envious of his hammer collection, but I'm not far behind. Uh, he's got some specialized ones that I'm, I'm going to start digging around for, looking for. Um, but just a quick note, um, this is a hardened chisel, and this is a ball-peen hammer. Uh, this is a Snap-on Dead Blow Ball Peen Hammer. And um, this is a very expensive Snap-on Body Hammer. Um, you never beat a hardened chisel with a very expensive um, Snap-on Body Hammer. This isn't even my best one. This is my roughing hammer. And I have a finish hammer, which I will bring into play in this process. But you don't use this hammer to beat on this. You don't use this hammer to beat on anything other than sheet metal where I'll take this pick end and shove it in your fucking head. Now, I don't know if it's showing up on video, but what's happening is, as I push this one down to create this lip, uh, this is starting to pucker more, which is what I want. Um, that means that lets me know that it's working. But this, the, the downfall of that is as it puckers, it's starting to roll in. So I have to bend that back out and then beat it some more. I, it's, it's shrinking it, but it's shrinking the wrong way. I just need to make it go the other direction. You control the sheet metal, the sheet metal does not control you. You know, whatever you want the sheet metal to do, it'll eventually do it if you put enough time and effort into making it do it. Now there's a lot of specialized tools out there, which I have a bunch of, uh, that you can use. Actually, there's some that I don't have, which uh, unless I start making motorcycle parts, again, I'm not going to buy. 
that make this a lot easier to do. Not this, but other, other flat stuff. Never put your fingers in between the dolly and your work surface. I should probably have a handle on this. The, the danger of using this particular tool is uh, it's actually got a pretty sharp edge and there's a distinct possibility that um, I'm going to actually ch chisel through the steel, which is fine. It, I have a TIG. I'm this far in. Uh, even if I don't get this project finished today, I, mean, I have a party on Sunday. Uh, if I don't get this done today, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to use that grill anyway. Now, I should note, I, I have noted already, but I'm going to do it again because it bears, uh, bears reiterating. Uh, I am not beating on this like it owes me money. Uh, my strikes are not as hard as they, they look. Uh, I got another tool for this too. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know what the hell this is. I don't know. I, I got a really bad habit of buying shit and uh, taking shit for free from people. Uh, this, this thing has come in handy more times than I can mention. Uh, I use it for popping hinges, doing exactly what I'm doing right now. It's got a pretty heavy bend in it. Uh, it's not incredibly sharp. It's got this nice little dip in it. And then this end is actually pretty blunt. Um, so you could bang on it from either end. If I can hit it this way into something uh, like this, which might come into play. But the reason I grab this is because I can put it in here and strike it here without damaging this face here. It's also narrow, more narrow than the, uh, than the chisel. Uh, the chisel's not moving in metal the way I want it to, so I'm just switching tools. Yeah, it's actually worked. It worked a lot better. I just got a little bit more work to do in here. And then I'm going to take it off of this little rig and I'm going to put it back on the bench and use a, uh, use a slapper to shrink this edge. Pissing me off. I'm gonna have to turn my other fan on too. It's a bit hot in here. My air conditioner sucks and won't pump up. Just haven't gotten around to getting another air conditioner yet. That and I'm getting fucking fat. Interesting. I might actually use this rig to uh, blanish this. I was gonna sit down in my chair and put it in my lap, uh, but I might not. All right, so let's, uh, let's get this thing off of here for a second. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to break this set up down real quick. Set it back on the bench and, uh, straighten that edge a little more. So what I was doing is straightening this edge out as much as I could and I was taking that chisel and using it to beat this out. Flies when you're having fun. Um, so this edge is still kind of caddy wompy. Uh, so I'm going to take the... Uh, I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to stick this 
this dolly back up in here, uh, I know it's not a dolly, it's just a piece of steel. With this curve actually down here, and just tap it. And throw these sandbags, you throw the sandbag on it to uh, keep it from making too much noise. Uh, and it gives it a little bit of weight, so it's not walking away. Uh, I'm actually, I got my gut into this, and I'm holding it with my hand and my elbow. Uh, what ends up happening is you end up cutting your elbow or something stupid. I'm going to flip it this way, so this little curve here gives me a little bit, I can put some pressure on this edge. I, I'm really not an expert at this. I've seen guys straighten uh, stainless and straighten aluminum, and when they're done with it, it's just you know phenomenal. It's like, how did you do that? They did it by you know decades of practice, but uh, I'm not bad. It'll be passable when I'm done. Passable for me. They uh, say so what I, I what I need to do is shrink this in here, uh, and I'm going to do that right now. I got to get the right tool for that. I, I hate to do it because it's really going to damage the metal. But no matter what I, I mean, it's damaged. So no matter what I do, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be damaged. And you can see this corner bore a good brunt of the beating or a, a good brunt of that hit. So, and then there's a spot right in here that's, uh, it's causing some problems for this edge being straight. So this edge is no is not straight. So it's up here and it's down here and, and here. So actually, you know what I'm gonna do first? I'm gonna straighten that lip out first. Like I said, 50% of sheet metal work, if not more, or maybe like 75% of sheet metal work, is choosing the right tool, the right time to do the right task. Uh, so you can see this lip is bent up. Okay, now if I, if I try to just bend this lip down, it's not going to help because of these little puckers in it. Uh, those puckers won't come out just beating on them. Um, they have, it's stretched, so we need to shrink it. And the way to shrink it, the way to cold shrink it is to use, well, eh, we'll get to this one in a minute. Uh, is to use these these tools. These are called slappers um, or body files um, or slapping files. Um, they're hardened. They're hardened steel. And in each different type, um, this one's actually got a curve to it, which we're not going to use. I don't think um, this is a good one. This this monster will move a ton of metal, like dangerous amount of metal. We're gonna put that one away. I don't want to be tempted. I've also got this hammer, um, which might come into play, I'm not sure. This has got a cam in it, um, so when you strike the surface, it twists and creates, um, it shrinks the metal. Um, I've had limited success with it. I, I bought it off a friend of mine um, who passed away, and I thought, ah, it would be great to have John's hammer, because he used to use the shit out of it. Um, but John was a little brutal. Um, and he was old school. He started doing body work back in the 40s or 50s and you know when cars were made out of real steel. So we're gonna just set that aside for a minute. So that brings me back to these three, okay? So this one, I don't know if it'll show up well on camera. This one is perfectly smooth. This is not a shrinking, uh, this is not a shrinker. This is a stretcher. Uh, and this thing will stretch a dangerous amount of metal. We're probably going to use this one because it also makes a great planishing hammer. Then it comes to these two. Uh, and it's not really showing up all that great on camera. So I have two, two different ones of these. I have a coarse and a fine. Now, shockingly, the fine moves more metal than the coarse. I know it doesn't make sense, but that's just for whatever reason, that's the way it worked. I'm sure there's somebody out there with a lot more smarts than me. Um, uh, there's somebody out there with a lot more smarts than me that knows exactly why that works that way. Uh, my assumption is, is because these are so close together, it's moving more material 
in a quicker amount of time. Whereas this one, these are further apart and they move slower. That's my hypothesis. Um, but through experience, I know that this one, the, uh, the fine one, yeah, you gotta be careful with that one. This is my preferred slapper or shrinker, stretcher, whatever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my ear melts back on and I'm gonna put that piece of sheet metal that, or that piece of metal that I had um, in here and I'm just gonna tap this edge down. You don't need to beat on it. You don't need to beat on it. I'm going, it, it looks like I'm beating on it. I know it does. I know it looks like I'm beating on it, but I am really not. Um, damn it. This has got more mass. Um, the mass of your dolly is very important. Um, the more mass, the easier it is to move material. Because <coughs> it acts as a hammer. So whenever you strike something... When I'm striking this, I'm striking it twice. I'm striking it once with this, and once with this. With this. <coughs> Smoke it up. This is called raising. Um, yeah, it's called raising. So basically, I need my straight edge again. Find straight edge. This one's too big. So I got to check the edge here, and it's still it's still down. Uh, it's actually up right here, which is a problem. So it's it's kind of kind of teetering right here. I'm gonna paint that there's a, a high spot right here that's kind of screwing up the whole work. So you see the dolly's walking that way. I want it to do that. You don't necessarily want to hit the dolly itself because that's a stretching operation uh, and we're trying to shrink. Yeah. As I'm hitting this this way, I'm pushing against the dolly this way. So like I said, there's two hits going on. The dolly is bouncing kind of like this. You don't want to just beat directly on what the dolly is. It doesn't do anything. Uh, it does, but that's a planishing operation. That's not what we're doing. Um, so, I think, I'm gonna give it a little back right about here. Uh, this is not hardened. This, this metal is not hard. It's actually it's pretty soft, it's hot rolled. So, you don't get stabbed in the eye for beating on this one. And notice that I've got, I'm, I'm not using the, the post dolly. This is just hanging in air. And I'm doing that for a reason. I want the bounce. Whoa, almost hit my finger. So, like I said, I'm hitting the dolly I'm not hitting the metal yet. That needs to be shrunk. Um, and it's, it, it is, like I said, it's creating this pucker in here. Now, this, this piece of material is just a little thin. Let's see if I have something a little thicker to help with this. 